Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Stacia from the Stacia D. Wright Show, The Drive on Bright Radio. I'm so excited because I am on location out in these streets, in the streets of Tacoma Park, Maryland. And my special guest today is one of my good friends, one of my favorite entrepreneurs <laughs> in the DMV. <laughs> It is my girl, Megan Murphy of Capital City Confectionery. Hey, Megan. Hello. Hello to everybody. We are excited to be here. Thank you for coming on site. And I can't wait to tell you all about us. Well, let me see. Let me tell y'all. We need to, you need to hold on to your, your cooking pans and your hats <laughs> and your bakery items because what we're about to get into today will leave your taste buds tantalized, as well as tell you some really cool things about what it is of the journey of the entrepreneur. Yeah. And uh, Megan is a resident expert, as I call her. <laughs> it is a journey for sure. So. Live on location here in Tacoma Park, my friend Megan Murphy. Megan, tell me about the background and the history to Capital City. And y'all, yeah, so the phones will be ringing because we're live on location and they're in business. She <laughs> she just went ahead and fit me in for this interview. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Capital City Confectionery actually started as Capital City Cheesecake eight years ago in 2010. And as everyone know, when you join the entrepreneur world, you have to be flexible, you have to be adaptable, you have to be willing to grow and to evolve. And so what started once as, you know, a cheesecake business concept grew to be a cheesecake cafe concept. And now in 2018, we are a bakery and event space. So basically, we're actually an event space that features our bakery Wednesday through Sunday, and people can come out and try our treats and sweets. Um, but you can also throw your bridal shower here, your baby shower, your kids' birthday parties. So we have definitely expanded, and we're excited for the next new chapter in our company. Well, I'm excited, too, because this space has been evolved as as Megan said over what 20 years or something this space has been here under previous ownership but then the Murphy family has come in and has really been a staple of the community now Megan you and your sister started this business how long ago um, and what has been the growing pains <laughs> So we started it a little bit before 2010 because we were a home baker, which I'm sure many people watching, you start off, you have a really good signature dish and everyone convinces you like you could sell that dish. And so it usually starts with like your mom saying it or your best friend. And so that's kind of how we started. My sister, uh, Katie, she had like a really good cheesecake recipe and we were both in job transitions at the time. And so we were like, why don't we bake cheesecakes and make some extra money for the Christmas time holidays? And it just started off like, like a little snowball on the top of a mountain. And as it rolls down, it gets bigger and bigger. And so next thing you know, a year later, we had some restaurants that were interested in carrying our cheesecakes. And we got our first obstacle, which was you need a commercial kitchen. And so this is where I really find that people that have signature dishes struggle because you want to grow, but to commit to finding a commercial kitchen or even a brick and mortar is where the costs go from you're making money off your cheesecakes when you bake them at home. All of a sudden you have rent, you have utilities, you need equipment. And so we made the commitment to find a commercial kitchen and then our business took the next jump, which was we had got recognition for our cheesecakes in the Washington Post. And so people wanted to visit our location. <laughs> but we were renting. We did not have a storefront for you to walk in like a Georgetown cupcake. And so we had to decide, did we want to stay wholesale and be behind the scenes or did we want to kind of branch out and get a storefront? And so that's what we did. We got the storefront and having a brick and mortar is a challenge. It's a constant challenge and we face several challenges throughout the year, having employees, it's a big challenge having systems in place. How do you deal with weather when you have a brick and mortar? You're dealing with snow, you're dealing with heat waves, and you have to open your door regardless. You have a set schedule versus a lot of some entrepreneurs that have home-based businesses. They can work from home. They can maybe take a break and go get their kids from school. But when you have the brick and mortar, when you open at 9, 
you need to open at nine. When you close at five. So that time you have to be on site and you have to have systems. So anyone that's exploring the food industry, you have to consider what it means to actually have the brick and mortar and how does that change and fit into your lifestyle. I'm sitting here with Megan Murphy, co owner of Capital City Confectionery. I have to keep looking at the sign because I'm so used to calling them Capital City Cheesecake, which was their original, and have now rebranded and relaunched with this new beautiful renovation space. You guys need to come on down to Tacoma Park, Maryland. Check them out. They're at the same location, same location, but they also have a fantastic presence online. Where can people find you on social media? So we are on Instagram. We're on Facebook. You can actually follow us on Pinterest. Um, it's just Capital City Confectionery, and our website's the same, capitalcityconfectionery.com. I guess it's Murphy's Law, literally. <laughs> Murphy's Law, yes. <laughs> that anything that could happen will happen, but yet and still she persisted because I love that Capital City Confectionery has rebranded, relaunched in 2018, a sister and family owned business in Tacoma Park, Maryland. And I love the tips just from having conversations on a regular with Megan on the the pros and cons of what it is to own your own business. But beyond that, you also are a mom who had to do all this and raise your family. How does work-life balance and, and how you grew up with this business while raising your child, how did that work out? Uh, I would say it did not work out the first few years. Uh, it is a balance and there is, a, I think that when you become an entrepreneur, the important thing is that you have physical, financial, spiritual, emotional balance. And we get, what happens with small businesses and uh, entrepreneurs is we kind of get stuck in the maintaining of our companies. So when you first get bit by the entrepreneur bug, you're like, let's go for it. We got this. It's like when you're in a marathon in your first few miles, you're like, okay, let's go. You're, you're amped up. You're excited. You don't realize that you have to reserve some of that energy because you have a long journey. So with the entrepreneur bug, you get bit by it. And the first, you're just off the break, like we're going to do this and that and this and that. And then the reality sets in of the work. That's the, that's the endurance part. And so what starts happening is if you don't have like a system in place, if you don't consciously go into being an entrepreneur, you're just following this deep burning passion without an actual plan in place, then you will start getting burnt out. And instead of growing and evolving, you're just maintaining. You're just trying to pay that Pepco bill. You're just trying to cover this employee shift. So every day you're like, here's my checklist. I just got to get through it. You're not even thinking about the fact that the company has stopped growing. And so it's the same thing with being a mom. Like, sometimes in a day you're just trying to get the kids to school. You're just trying to get kids to the swim class, you're just trying to get dinner, you're not even connecting with the kid anymore. You're more worried about providing than you are about connecting. And so when we built this new concept, we actually sat down with the family and asked ourselves like, what is important? And how do we weave that into our concept? And what's important is to make sure you carve out space to continue to have your family. So that's, you know, being conscious, being aware of what it takes and if you're an entrepreneur and you're like, well, I work 80 hours a week. I mean, I was that person. And I thought that if you worked harder, you would achieve your goals. But what I've learned is work smarter. Now, working smart still requires hard work. I'm not replacing it's a cold one, cold four, cold. yes, yeah, together. <laughs> but working smarter means that you are taking into consideration everything. You're taking into consideration your family time and that to actually be creative, you have to carve out downtime. If you don't have time, it's like prayer and meditation. If you don't take that time, your mind stops being creative and it's just in a robotic mode. So carving out a day off a week is required for your company to actually grow. So that's what I would suggest is remember how when you have downtime and your mind starts being like, why are we doing this and why are we doing that? You gotta carve that time out for yourself. So it's a balance. It is a balance, and I know for many, uh, myself included, and many of you who are listening and watching and understand what it's like, it's a grind, but you point nail on the head of, you know, it's about being intentional. It's intentional. 
and at the Capital City Confectionery. So, you guys relaunched in 2018. What is the newness that people can come into? If somebody is, like, y'all are watching here, but we're only in one small space. If you happen, to, oh, if you happen to be on this video, you just see one small space. But describe to everyone the vibe, the concept. I love you guys branded something like um, creative expression or artsy something something. Break it down for me. What it can people? What what makes you excited about this new relaunch? Yeah. So we describe ourselves as like an interactive bakery. And so me and my sister were teachers prior to being, you know, a food, being in the food establishment. And so we wanted kind of to touch back to the teacher side of ourselves. And so when we talk about being an interactive bakery, when you walk in, we have our small bakery and a coffee shop, but now we're launching cookie decorating classes. We have kids birthday parties where the kids can do crafts. And let's say it's a we did a princess and dragon event this weekend for a child and they got to make uh, dragon eggs, but they made it out of like flour and water. And so the same ingredients that we're using to make cookies, we're showing the kids you can use it to make other items. And so we're really able to like bring people's imagination alive. So we also like behind this sign is my cookie decorating station. So some sometimes you can walk in and I'll be decorating for a baby shower or a bridal shower. You can talk to me, you can ask me different like, tricks that I do or different tips that I have. And so we want people to walk in and feel like they're part of our concept, but they can also be hands on in our concept. At the same time, like I said, we describe ourselves as an event space that features a bakery. So our primary use of our space is events. We want you to celebrate here. Not only can you celebrate here, but you have a built in bakery where we make all your items fresh right downstairs and can bring the cupcakes right on upstairs. And that's exciting for guests that come out. They're like, like, wow, I'm actually in a bakery and I get to try the baked items and we get to celebrate. And so we just want to, like our whole slogan is to taste, to share and to celebrate love. And so that's what we want whenever you come into our establishment is to experience one of those three things. I love it. And it's an experience that you will not soon forget. I'm telling you, if you have not come down to Capital City Confectionery and seen this new beautiful space, the outside is even different. You can't even, you're, it's a beautiful, um, I don't even know what is that, Heather Gray? What do we call that? It's like you come and you're like, wait a minute, there's something different especially now that the sun is coming out, if we could ever get through spring. <laughs> Come on, spring. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but this is all year round. You can hang out here at Capital City Confectionery and do your events, have food um, and bakery items. And you also have um, beer, wine, paint, sip, that whole thing. You can go. It's a one-stop shop for being creative and it's family too oh yeah <laughs> yeah we're a family owned business sorry about the phone we are live today so we have customers but um, we are a family business, and so my parents are involved. My nieces and nephews come out, and they help us with, you know, figuring out what bet. Like, we have a slime class because my niece and nephew are at the age where slime is everything. And so, you know, they come out, and they help us come up with ideas for kids. And so at some point, you'll usually see my dad outside hobbling around doing some maintenance. You'll see my mom giving customers hugs. But... We are family. That's the heart of Capital City Confectionery. And we're just blessed to be able, me and my sister are best friends, whether we are working together or not, we hang out 24 seven. So to be able to watch each other grow and evolve has just been like a blessing beyond blessing. So, um, so we're getting ready to, we're finalizing our summer camp program. And so we're going to be inviting kids to come out this summer and to bake with us and to create with us. So that was, should be live, you know, around May 1st. Um, right now we're working on setting up some cookie decorating classes, especially for like families to do a family night where they can come out together and just bond and have fun. I mean, the best thing about cookie decorating is like an art activity and then you get to eat it. So it's art and dessert all in one. So those are things that are coming out. We're looking at cookie and sip nights. We're getting different events lined up for the summertime, but people can always email me. I've done private classes. So there are times where a mom will email me and say, Hey, my daughter 
they're 12 year olds. Can I pay for five of them to come after school and do a cookie decorating? So you can send us your ideas as much as we'll have our own events, but we definitely do private moments, private events for kids where they can just come out and have fun with their friends. So whatever your ideas are, like feel free to email us. Our email address is on our website, which is capitalcityconfectionary.com. But we're excited because we're in the beginning phase. So we're like, if you have a vision, let us help bring it to life. If you're an entrepreneur who needs to a space for a workshop or a seminar, you can book our space. If you are a yoga instructor who needs a place you can book our downstairs space. So we're really kind of like a blank canvas and we want you to paint with us. I love it. Again, go to Capital City Confectionery. Thank you so much, Megan Murphy, for coming and being a part of the Bright Radio family. And I'm looking forward to doing more stuff with Megan myself. You guys have to stay tuned and see what Stacia in the Streets is doing. (laughs) Because I'm always doing something. So it has been a great day to hang out at Capital City Confectionery. Check them out online, capitalcityconfectionery.com. Follow them on social media. I know on Instagram, I love everything that y'all, for real, go see the cookies and pastries and stuff that they have posted online. You will be salivating. (laughs) And um, so you guys are on Facebook and Instagram as well. All right, that's it for today on Bright Radio. I'm your girl, Stacia from the Stacia D. Wright Show. Have a great day, everyone.